intertenant contracts are contracts between different tenants, as the name implies, but they come in different flavors. It could be that you have the EPGs in the same BRF, or they could be in different BRFs. The tenants could be two normal user tenants, like in this example, or they could be a tenant common and a regular tenant. And so based on these different combinations, there are slight variations to the configuration. Just like for inter-VRF contracts, you need to be mindful about the scope of the contract. With scope global, you know that the configuration is always going to work, but you need to remember that if you reuse the same contract that has a scope global in multiple tenants, um, you could open the communication between all these different tenants because you're connecting them with this global contract. So be mindful about the scope settings. So the main difference with intra-tenant contracts is really about which EPG can see the contract. Because for a contract to be provided or consumed by an EPG, that contract object must be visible by the EPG. And if you configure contracts in the same tenant, that's always the case. But if you configure a contract between different tenants, that's not necessarily true because an object of tenant one is not automatically visible in tenant two. And the only exception is tenant common because all the objects of tenant common are visible and usable by other tenants. So for user tenant to user tenant contracts, you have two options, right? One, and we'll describe it later, one is to leverage objects defined in tenant common or the provider tenant, and notice provider here, must export the contract and the consumer tenant can find the contract as an imported contract and it's configured as a contract interface. So it's such terminology, but again, you have two choices for user tenants to user tenants configurations, and we're going to describe them in the next few slides. Let's start from uh, the very the simplest possible uh, scenario, which is you configure an intra URF contract between two tenants, and one of these tenants is tenant common. So you can use the VRF, you define a VRF in tenant common, VRF1, and so that VRF is also visible from tenant one. And DPG web is associated with the BD that is associated with VRF1. The contract is defined within tenant common with a scope that can be either VRF or could be global. Which side this provider or consumer is irrelevant. The configuration is the same as a normal intra-tenant configuration. There's nothing special here. Let's now talk about the scenario with an intra-VRF contract between two user tenants uh, that are using a contract defined in tenant common. So in this case, each EPG is in a different tenant but the VRF that the two tenants are using and the contracts that the two tenants are using are defined in tenant common. Uh, and because of that, they're visible from the individual tenants. Uh, so this configuration is very simple. There's no VRF sharing involved. The contract scope is either VRF or global, and it doesn't matter which side is provider or consumer. Okay. Now let's add a little bit of complexity. Let's consider a scenario where there is a contract between the tenant common and a user tenant, but tenant common and user tenant use different VRFs. So common tenant uses VRF1 and user tenant uses VRF2. So in this case, from a visibility of the contracts perspective, uh, there's nothing special to do. So you need to define a contract in tenant common. You need to set the scope to be global. Now, which side is provider or consumer, it doesn't matter. I mean, it matters from the VRF sharing perspective, but from the inter-tenant configuration, it doesn't. And then the configuration is the same as you would do for inter-VRF contracts. So yes, the difference with the inter-VRF configuration is just the fact that you need to define the contract uh, in tenant common, it's visible from the user tenant, and that's it. Now let's consider another case, the case where and you have two user tenants, each one of them with their own VRF, uh, but they're using a contract defined in tenant common. So DPGs are in different tenants, they're in different VRFs, and 
the contract is visible from both because it's defined in tenant common and it has a, a global scope. Uh, again, which side is provider or consumer, it's irrelevant. Uh, it's just relevant from the VRF leaking perspective. So you need to know which uh, subnet to put where, but otherwise from a inter-tenant configuration per se, it, there's nothing really special. Let's consider the case where the contract is defined within a tenant and not within tenant common. Uh, in this case, you need to be clear about which tenant is the provider and which one is the consumer because the contract is exported from the provider tenant and it's consumed from the user tenant. The configuration, so when you go to the UI, you will see under import contracts, the contract has been exported by the other tenant. And when you go to the PG, you need to define what's called a contract uh, interface. Okay. Um, the scope of the contract must be global. And then, of course, the usual uh, VRF sharing configurations apply. So this is summarizing what we discussed. So if you need to configure an intra VRF contract, and then you have contracts between common tenant and a user tenant, the control scope can be VRF or global. There's no need to export contracts. There's no need to uh, define route leaking. If you need to configure an inter VRF contract, and that's between a common tenant and a user tenant, uh, the contract scope must be global and there's no need to uh, do any contract export. And finally, if you need to configure an inter VRF contract in uh, between different mm, user tenants and the contract is in one of the two, then the scope must be global and the contract must be exported. Uh, and then as usual for uh, VRF sharing purposes, uh, the route leaking is required. Okay, so now just to help you finding where the configurations are, when you want to define intertenant contract and tenant common is involved, you just define a standard contract, okay? So for instance here, and then I would say this is a global contract. That's where you would set the scope, okay? Uh, so if you set it to global, you know it's gonna work in all cases. And then here you would list different uh, subjects and filters, which is outside of the scope of this short explanation. So with that contract, if you then need to configure that contract between two EPGs, well, one EPG would be in tenant common, and let's assume that you want to define an intertenant contract with this particular tenant. So now if you look at the EPGs here, you will find that you can provide or consume the contract from tenant common, because here in the list, you will see under tenant common, you'll see here global contract, the one we just created. So the contract visible, and then you can do everything you need to do. Okay. Now that's for the case where you define contracts in tenant common. In the case that you want to define a contract in this tenant, and then you want to consume it from different one, then what you need to do is you go to here, um, to the usual place, and then I already defined one. I called it cross tenant contracts. You may need to make sure that the um, uh, the scope is correctly set, so it's set to global. Then the next thing you do, you export a contract. So in this case, this is going to be the provider tenant. I call it exported contract. And then you say which tenant you want to export it to. So let's export it to the RF sharing test, okay? So I submit. And so this contract now is visible from the RF sharing test, and it appears here as imported contract, right? So how to use it? You go to, now this side is the consumer. So you select a EPG here. And then here you need to select consumed contract interface. That's how you use uh, the contract that was exported.